not only do we have a more or less a functioning uh, 2D platformer with even like dynamic stuff, uh, let's just have a little bit of fun creating uh, some other stuff. So I want to create a platform that I can jump through uh, from the bottom, and then when I'm uh, on top of it, it will be solid. So it's a one-way uh, type of platform. That is something that a lot of 2D platformers have, and it's just a fun little experiment uh, to do. We took a look at Talmap actors, which are actors that I can put into uh, the game that are rendering and behaving through a tile map. So we make this little tile map here for a platform, uh, which uh, is just these three tiles. Of course, we can make this anything that we want. We can make it wider, we can make it taller, we can whatever we want to do with it, we can do with it. And then we made a tile map actor of of that that uses that as its rendering component so if we just get rid of all these pop-ups you can see the tile map that it uses is that rendering tile map so let's copy over the moving platform real quick and call this the one way platform and we're going to get rid of all of the code in here because obviously uh, we don't need any of this uh, for a one-way platform. The one-way platform is actually fairly easy uh, to set up. We don't need begin play. We don't need begin overlap. We only need the event tick. And for event tick, what we're going to do is we're going to get player character or even player pawn if you want to, uh, because technically speaking, this works in more scenarios. So if you aren't using a character, player pawn is technically uh, a better choice to go with. And then we'll get the actor's location from that. And we're going to compare that to the actual location from this platform itself. And here we need to do a little bit of math. Because while in the character, the player's sprite might be on his feet, the player location is at the center of its capsule component. And that is kind of annoying. <laughs> Uh, the way that that works, I personally don't like it, but it's because it scales the uh, capsule size from the center, so the position is calculated from uh, its center. So what we need to do is we need to check what the half height is of this. In this case, uh, let's set that to an EM44, and we need to kind of just remember that. Or alternatively, you can uh, get this dynamically if you expect this to change during gameplay, like if you have a power-up that makes you taller or whatever, uh, like in a Mario game. Um, in that case, you can use the get player character itself because you can get the capsule component uh, from that. So that's all the way down here from which we can get the half height, uh, the scaled capsule half height, and that is the actual half height of it in the world. And the reason that we need that is because we want to compare the position of our player's feet to the top of the platform that we have here. If the player's feet are above the platform, the platform should be solid. If the player's feet are under the platform, the platform should not be solid, at least toward the player. Because if we have characters walking on top of this, we don't want those to fall through either. So there's a couple of weird little like twists that we have to take into account. But we'll get to that when we get to that. For now, we need to get the actor location uh, and then let's split the structure pin. We don't care about the X and the Y, only about the Z, so only about the height. Uh, and we subtract the half height from that to get the feet position of our character. Uh, so let's just use the character anyway, since, that, since we're using it this way. This is more dynamic. So if we decide to change it, we don't have to like manually go back in here and change it. So that's kind of nice. Then our current actor's location, which is the platform's location, uh, will also split. And here we need to know uh, how big this actor is. We happen to know from previous experience that these tiles are 16 by 16, and we're scaling them up by four times. So the tiles themselves are 64 by 64. But the origin location of these actors, if I click on one, is in the middle. So to get the top location, we should get the actor's location plus the half size, again, of any of these squares, which is 32. So what we do is we go back in here, we get the actor's location, Z, and we add to that uh, 32 in this case. We can pretty much hard code that because we're not going to change that around too much. And then we just check, hey, is this actor's Z location at his feet? Is that greater than the top position of this platform? If it is, we're going to need to uh, change some collision settings. And... Here we need to make a custom collision channel, ideally, uh, to work with. So let's go into our project settings. 
in our project settings, uh, we go under engine and then we go to collision. And here we can add new object channels. So let's add an object channel. Uh, and I need to make this window a little bit bigger. Uh, the name for this will be player. The player will have an entire object channel to itself so that we can set specific interactions for things with the player that it doesn't affect other characters or other pawns in the game. The default response to it will be block. Most things will just block the player by default. Uh, but then we need to go into our player character and in our capsule components, we do need to go in and uh, in its collision settings uh, right here. We change this from pawn to being uh, custom. And you see that it doesn't actually show up anything uh, to do with the player collision channel that we've just made. So what you might need to do is you might need to restart the engine real quick for that to take effect. So we're going to do that right now. So after we've done that, we can come back in here and now the object type can be set to player. So now the collision uh, for our capsule component will be treated as a player channel. Uh, also do go into your sprite real quick now that we're here anyway, and we can check the collision for it. It should be set to character mesh. Uh, since we already have the collision from our capsule component, uh, which we also need to use for our character movement and stuff. Uh, we don't really need the sprite itself to have any collision, so we're just going to set that to no collision, because the sprite itself can and sometimes will interfere with uh, some other collision settings, and you don't want to have to deal with that. So now in our one-way platform, again, we can set the collision response to a specific channel. And the channel we're going to be changing to is the player. And what do we want to respond to this as? Well, we want to actually uh, select that based on uh, this bool. So if our Z location of our player is greater than the actor's uh, top location, so that, so that is true, uh, we want to set this to block. And if it is false, that means that we're under it, we want to set this to false. And we just do that on every frame. And that's kind of everything there is to it. So now what we can do is we can get our one-way platform and put it like literally anywhere, to be honest. Now you might have a similar issue to me where uh, this results in your player just falling off the stage uh, because for some reason when you change the object type of the capsule, uh, that might affect the player spawn uh, code because it's trying to find like collision and it's, it's kind of freaking out uh, over the entire thing. So the way to fix that is easily just to not use a player start, uh, preferably, and just use the BP player uh, placements here directly. Make sure that he's placed at zero, zero, and then just look for possess and then auto possess by player, uh, just player zero. And if we do that, that fixes it and we can just walk around and everything is as it should be. And we can jump up here and we can jump through and we can stand up. So this platform only works in uh, one direction now from the bottom to the top, we can jump through, uh, but it is solid from the top the moment we are above it. So that's how to set up a simple one way platform. So I want to say next time, let's take a look at adding in a little bit of lighting into this thing, right? Because everything is so flatly lit, uh, I think it's good to take a look at how we can maybe do a little bit of lighting work on this entire thing. And a very big thank you to all my patrons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And of course, an extra massive thank you to my cave digger tier supporters. Sergey Thomas